So I'm gonna be uploading this video for the second time. The first time I was not happy with how the uh, the intro turned out. So anyway, that being said, what we're gonna be doing is making a two inch dual two ohm voice coil for an Alpine type R. Um, I'll be uh, wrapping the wire on it. I'll be uh, making the former, putting the collars, doing the whole deal. Uh, if you've already watched the first upload well then you know uh don't waste your time you've already seen it if you haven't seen it it's gonna be a good video i make a couple mistakes in it i wasn't able to um get all four layers done in this video so um the following part two will have the layers three and four plus testing and and uh not installation because I'll be putting it into the uh, I'll be making three of them and I'll be putting them into the triplets they're gonna look something like this except um this one doesn't have a secondary collar on it yet so um uh, I will make the layers three and four on part two um this this right here is uh where I get to in this video there's one and two um and uh, I, I think several times in the video, I, I say that I'll be uh, only doing part layer four in part two, but I actually only get to layer two. So that's a little bit of a, an error on my part as I was uh, narrating what I was doing. Um, so like I said, it'll be layers one and two, how I determine winding height, all that kind of stuff and the process of winding it. Uh, so check it out. Uh, if you haven't already hit the subscribe button. Uh, I look forward to uh, sharing my videos with you. So the next step in um, making this voice coil is going to be getting the aluminum onto a spindle. I've already cut it to length. Um, this is the uh, spindle, but it's a little bit small. If you put it in the original, it's a bit sloppy. So it needs some shims on it. Um, this, uh, I mean, you can see that it's oversized for it as is. But what we're going to do is wrap it with shims until we have the matching diameter for that. It's a little bit too curved here. I did curve it with a one inch PVC pipe and then subsequently with a smaller pipe that made the curve a little bit too much so I want to have a little bit of outward spring to it just so that once the coils on it it holds itself against the coil um, that being said I also want to be as close as possible to the correct okay so I oh, hope that just released didn't it okay so this This is how we make sure everything is absolutely as tight as possible. So this is the former on the spindle. It's triple shimmed so that it matches the inside diameter of this voice coil. We're going to be matching the wire gauge on that and the winding height. And I'm going to make three of these guys. Um, 
all matching. Um, you can see that I've scuffed up the aluminum with sandpaper um, to improve mechanical bonding with the epoxy that I'm going to use. I use a high temperature epoxy, um, which I can't currently see. It's in a box behind me. Um, so we'll put this on the, the spindle and then we got to set up the wire tensioner and we'll uh, start putting some wire on it. So this is my extremely crude voice coil manufacturing setup. Uh, it doesn't look like much, but it functions. This is a very crude uh, tensioner. It just has a spring. I wrap it twice to straighten out the wire. I'll have to line that up with the starting point before I start gluing it down. Um, and then we'll, um, and I'll secure this a bit better. But for now, what we're gonna do is figure out uh, exactly how tall the winding needs to be um, for a two ohm voice coil. So it is 24 gauge. I measured uh, 0 0.0215 inches. Okay, so as I said, we we're going to put the 24 gauge onto this former. I'm going to calculate the winding height to get two ohms. So two ohms divided by 25.67 ohms per 1,000 feet equals 0 0.077 or 7% multiplied by 1,000 feet equals 77.9 feet multiplied by 12 equals 935 feet divided by 2 equals 467 feet and then we're going to divide that by the circumference which is 6.28 divided by 2 divided by 3.14 equals 74.43 turns to get the winding height and then we're going to multiply that by the wind the wire thickness which is 0 0.0215 or 1.6 inches exactly so that is our winding height so i decided to go a slightly different route i'm going to do the um collar before I do the winding itself. Um, uh, so what I'm gonna do is, the next step I'm gonna, I've clamped the aluminum piece uh, former onto the spindle. I don't even see that in the, where the camera's actually looking. And I'm gonna wrap this section here after I clean it. Uh, I'll use some alcohol to clean it. Uh, and then I will, use the two-part epoxy this is um high temperature epoxy i think it's like 527 degrees fahrenheit or something maybe not necessary for the collar i don't know that's the stuff i use and uh so we'll clean it it's been sanded then we'll put the collar on uh, and i'm going to wrap it with a piece of parchment paper so that i can put a rubber band on it and the rubber band won't stick to the I thought I already cut that though. Strange. Where did it go? Um, won't stick to the epoxy. Um, that's super weird. There it is. There's my piece of parchment paper. Clean that with the alcohol. So we'll take a little bit of alcohol just to make sure that there's not any grease or anything on there. before we glue the former on. Especially at the seam, find that on all the voice coils I've ever had fail, that seems to be the first place they go. Let's just give it a quick heat, get some of that off of there, and just make sure I don't touch it again. And the other thing is that Actually, we won't apply heat because I uh, don't touch it. What we're going to do now is mix up some of each of these. This one is the big one. It needs to be stirred. I need a spreader too. Let's 
Okay. Then we're going to mix it with this one. Put them all the closer together. So now we're just going to wrap it with parchment paper because parchment paper, I can put a rubber band directly on it to hold the collar snug in all the right places. And now I have to worry about it sticking. It hasn't quite been 24 hours yet, but the glue is still a bit tacky, but it's holding, I'm sure. So we're gonna take the rubber band and parchment off. I might end up leaving the parchment on and shifting the clamp, but we'll see. Yeah, it's still a bit sticky. So what I'll do is wrap this back around it like that and then shift some of the clamps over the collar. Mm. tonight before this glue is fully cured or well it will be fully cured tonight but at least this way we can wind it tonight so what we're gonna do though is shift oh yeah this like this Probably have to sand some of the excess glue that got under the original clamp because I think we're a little bit inside. About 1.7 winding height. That's fine. I have to adjust this again. Have a little bat. Nice. Clean seam down the middle there. And I'll have to clean that again. I'm not working on it right now. I just wanted to come take a look.
So I just uh, finished winding the first layer and then uh, cleaned it with epoxy just to keep any excess glue off the winding itself. The ends don't matter so much because I'm gonna I'm going to um, fill this area right here with glue anyway. Once all the layers, almost like an end cap. Um, so I don't worry about cleaning that up too much. Um, it measures just under 1.7. There's a little bit of space, more space in between than I'd like to say right there, for example. Like these are really tight and then there's a couple gaps. But I think that's um, overall, it's not really going to, it won't cause any dipping in the subsequent layers. If there's big gaps, the, the, the next layer will dip down into and you get telegraphing up through all your layers and it just gets worse and worse. I don't have anything causing that much concern. So I will let this glue cure. It takes about... Um, 12 hours before I can do the next layer. So we're just gonna start on layer two now. Um, I'm giving it probably 10 hours or 12 hours to, to cure. So we're gonna put the next layer of wire, bring it back up. That'll finish our first, first voice coil of the dual voice coil. And when that's, when that's done, we'll have a chance to cure. So tomorrow I'll put on the next, uh, whining. place where this is cured and also the um, collar is fully cured so we don't need this clamp at all anymore and we can disconnect this one and cut this wire so where are my cutters why is it such a mess again? Well, I need scissors, but that's not what I want. Hmm, huh, this is strange. A little bit odd. Ah, here we go.
because um, we're making an alpine voice coil or a voice coil for an alpine or call it what you want. We're going to want to keep the two sets of pigtails on the same side of the voice coil. So that's what we're doing. Collecting that. Let's take this parchment paper can come off now. Actually, what we're going to do is just release the whole thing. And then... Makes it a bit easier to work on. Now, let's leave this a bit to here. So once again, I'm just going to do a quick video summary. Uh, I only did the, the two layers in this video. The following video will have layers three and four plus testing um, for impedance on each of the two coils. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. Um, hopefully you stick around, uh, subscribe and check out part two when I finish the coil and you see how it, uh, how it turns out and how it works when I put it in a sub. However, the sub installation will be a different video. So sorry about that. But anyway, um, like I say, thanks for watching.